We start today's video by talking about my homeland, New Zealand. Home of the Kiwi, loads of sheep, and some fiercely competitive racing. Yes, despite what you may think of the country's relative isolation on the world map, New Zealand plays host to several internationally recognised racing series, including a round of the V8 Supercars Championship, the Toyota Racing Series, and the New Zealand Rally, among others. However, New Zealand isn't quite as well known when it comes to top flight racing drivers. In Formula 1, only 9 drivers from New Zealand have actually started a Formula 1 Grand Prix. Today's video, however, focuses on a New Zealander who could have made it into Formula 1. You may have actually heard of him. It was none other than 6-time IndyCar champion Scott Dixon, who won his 6th series title just last week. Dixon, who entered IndyCar for the first time in 2001 and won the series championship for the first time in 2003 at the age of 23, was targeted by BMW Williams for a Formula 1 drive in 2004. At the time, Dixon's career was managed by Formula Ferrari and McLaren F1 driver Stefan Johansson, who at the time felt that Dixon was one of the fastest drivers he'd ever seen. The Williams F1 team, which were then powered by BMW, gave the New Zealander a one tailed test driver, Paul Ricard. Despite never having driven a Formula 1 car before, Dixon showed respectable pace and set lap times not too far behind the team's then current second driver, Ralph Schumacher. Williams invited Dixon back for an official appearance for a three day test session at Barcelona, where he consistently set competitive times in the car and was eventually faster than the more experienced Schumacher, with mechanical issues unfortunately setting him back. Sir Frank Williams later said that Dixon had impressed him and he believed Dixon could really make a mark on Formula 1. It looked as if all the stars were aligned for Scott Dixon to become the first Kiwi in Formula 1 since Mike Thackwell in 1984. However, the usual Formula 1 circus of politics and bureaucracy intervened. BMW, Williams' engine supplier, did not want a rookie in the second seat and recommended German driver Nick Heidfeld, who had left the uncompetitive and financially struggling Jordan team. It was rumoured that BMW's reluctance to hire Dixon was also due to the fact that Dixon was racing in the IndyCar series with Toyota engines. As a major competitor to BMW, the thought of racing a previously successful driver in a Toyota engine car may have been vetoed by higher ups at BMW management. However, this was never proven, and BMW ended up signing Mark Webber and Nick Heidfeld for the 2005 Formula 1 season. Ferrari boss Jean Todd expressed interest in testing Dixon in the Ferrari F1 car during the 2005 season, however Dixon decided to stay in IndyCar in the hopes of more success rather than being shunted into a Formula 1 reserve driver role. With that, Dixon's hopes at a career in Formula 1 vanished for good, with most people deeming it an immense missed opportunity. He was ranked 5th in a 2013 poll by Autosport of the top 50 drivers never to make it to F1, and is still widely considered to have been Formula 1 champion material. However, it's not all bad. Dixon used his Formula 1 experience as a crucial step in negotiations with Chip Ganassi in 2004, going on to score all of his 6 titles and 50 series wins with the team. In a discipline where younger talent is getting faster by the day, Dixon's championship victory at 40 years old is a phenomenal achievement, and the New Zealander is rightfully deemed one of the greatest drivers in American open-wheel history. His Formula 1 career may not have worked out, but in IndyCar, he truly proved his worth as a motorsport legend.